today, uh, what I want to talk to you about is, um, last week, Pastor talked about a strategy, right? And do you have a goal or do you have a strategy or a plan? Can we put up that slide, bro? The first one, are we good? Cool. So there it is, right? My objective, right? Do we have a goal or a, a strategy? Our word, right? We're going to we're going to be intentional with this word, right? It's going to be out of Psalms 131 and um, Matthew 11, 28 through 30. I'm going to go through those two verses. Um, our intentional with this word is, are you being? Just remember that, right? Are you being? And then last, non-negotiable and exciting prayer, right? A dangerous prayer. We just went through that, right? We prepared. Um, cool. So let's jump on. Let's jump on and move on. Our next slide. Here says, um, I, I, I put these pictures here. The last time I preached was a while back, um, but I, I had an encouragement for the men. And, and when, after I was, a lot of times I, I, my wife critiques me, and then I think about the message I had. And one thing the Lord told me is, I, I talked to, I encouraged the men. I said, the men were lacking in the children's church, but we have about five young men that are, that are serving back there that don't even have kids. And God said, what about them? And I was like, ooh, I forgot. So I wanted to call them out, right? We have Curtis, Sammy, um, Christian with a K, and then Christian with a C, and then Timmy, right? And, and they, they serve back there, and they don't even have kiddos. They're, they're all 18 and above, um, um, serving with, with all their heart, and, and God wanted to recognize you. I'm, I'm sorry about that. Um, I, I did a, a message on Proverbs, and Proverbs should have been, that should have been like two or three messages. I wanted to apologize for that, but um, God had a plan for somebody, right? And uh, the young lady came up to my wife and said, you know, I was praying about being a Proverbs 31 woman, and I want to thank you for you and your husband sharing that, and, and, um, and, and what an encouragement, because I was, I was doubting I should have made that longer or shorter but God had a plan for somebody. So God has a plan for this message for somebody. And then last, the word that I'm going to talk about, you see that little football, the, the um, NFL. There's 32 teams in the NFL. Anybody know that? I really didn't know that. I had to look that up. But each one of them should have had a goal. They had a goal to make the Super Bowl. But only one's going to make it, right? Next week with the Super Bowl, we're going to have two teams that um, had a strategy that made it, right? So that's what we're going to talk about today. And I'm going to help, uh, hopefully I'll give you a spiritual strategy, right? When we read the word, how can we can relate that word and have a strategy? Not just a goal of reading the Bible, not just a goal of being a Christian, but how do we work that out, right? How do we follow that out? Is that cool? Um, so what I came up with, and this was back in October, that this word came to me and it's been sitting in Bruin and um, um, the Lord always pushed me to do it. And I'm not, no, I'm not going to, I'm going for pastor to let me know that I'm ready. And I just sat on it, right? But it's called WWW. Can we go to the next slide? WWW. And what the W's mean is you got to watch. I don't know if anybody was here. I mean, if everybody was awake, but if you got to see what happened, you got you to gotta watch this, right? What happened just a few minutes ago, what Pastor TC did and prayed, and he said, we're going to do it biblically. You got you to get that in the mind. You got to catch that. You got to catch that. And then when you catch it, when you, when you start reading the word, you catch it, you, you're getting it, there, then there's a war. There's a battle that's going to happen, right? And then after that battle, you got to learn to walk it out. So I'm going to talk about those three terms um, Using Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28. We'll go to the next one, bro. Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 says this. Jesus said, come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heaven burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy to bear, and the burdens I give you is light. Come on, right? Some of us have some burdens today, right? With illnesses, family and family members in the hospital. Um, uh, so we, I'm going to try to use this, right? David, right? We, we prayed for David. The last time he preached, I heard a word from him. And he said, y'all got to watch, watch what you do. Your children are watching. 
Watch, right? He said that. Be careful what you do. And, and, and that's a term that we study in, in, in education, right? And here's what it said. It is true that William Tapiff said that children take more notice of what their parents do than what they say. As they are seeing what is done, hearing what is said, and they will eventually end up saying and doing very much the same thing as you, either for good or bad. Much is caught than ever taught, as children can hear what you're saying because your action is drowning out your words. Woo! Step on some toes there, right? Look at the next slide. Next slide says, more is caught than taught basically means that people learn by our behaviors. They do what we say. The same could be said for our boundaries. People learn more about how we treat us by the way we treat ourselves and honor how we honor our own boundaries. Woo! That's powerful too, right? So watch. So check it out. Look at the next slide. In the first verse of Matthew eleven twenty eight, it says, then Jesus said, come to me, all you who are weary and carry a heaven burden, and I will give you rest. That word rest is a compound word made up of two words, ana and payu. Payu, hope I pronounced that right. And the ana is to, and payu is to make cease, stop, or keep right. So after, after he created everything, he rested, he stopped. He looked at it. It was right. Right? Everything was right. And I think a lot of times we need to stop. Stop what we're doing. Cease. And to make it right and pray. That's what we did earlier today. Come on. And then after we get that word, we got a war, right? Our spiritual warfare. Let's go to the next one, bro. Galatians 5, verse 17 says, For the desires of the flesh are against the spirit, and the desires of the spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other to prevent you from doing what you would. The main thing to learn from this verse is that Christians experience a struggle within. If you said to yourself, when I was describing the flesh, well, I have a lot of that still left in me, it does not necessarily mean you aren't a Christian. A Christian is not a person who experiences no bad desires. A Christian is a person who is at war with those desires by the power of the Spirit. Some of us might be warned right now because we said, hey, we should be eating some tacos in the next 15 minutes. And I hope I'm done in the next 15 minutes. But um, it's, it's a battle. When, when, when we want to stop something and stop what we're doing, we want to make things right, we want to start reading the word. I think Pastor said to get in your word last week. He encouraged us to get in our word. That is a battle in itself to sometimes stop and read the word. We make excuses. I, I, got, too, I got too much going on. We wait. I'll do it in the evening. I do it before I go to bed. I get home. I'm too tired. I fall asleep. I forget. Right? We got to battle and make some time for that. The next slide, with that warning, right? What are the keys to success in spiritual warfare? We rely on God's power, not our own. We put on the armor of God. We draw from the power of the scripture. The word of God is the spirit's sword. We pray in perseverance and holiness, making our appeal to God. We stand firm in Ephesians 6, 13. That's what it says, we stand firm. That's what that scripture, look up that scripture. And we submit to God. We resist the devil, the devil's works, um, found in James 4, 7, knowing that the Lord of hosts, our protector, truly is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will never be shaken, found in Psalm 62, 2. So we got to, we're going to make a New Year's goal. I'm going to start reading the word. I'm going to try to read the word, but I really don't have a strategy. I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to do it before I go to work, and then I sleep in. I'm going to do it when I get home. I'm tired and I fall asleep. And you got to battle, right? You got you to make sure you put on that armor and have that sword with you. 
and pick up that word, right? Look at what, look what Matthew um, 11, 29 says then. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your soul. The word yoke, right? When we're warring, the word yoke means to unite two people to move together like two pans. They're weights, right, that operate together on a balance of scales. When I, when I looked up this word in the definition, I always thought about the, the ox and the yoke. But when this, this comment, or it was a, it was a um, Hebrew translation, used this analogy, right, the weights of balance. Looked a little bit more appealing, right? Looked a little bit more, okay, now I can understand that, that um, I know balancing, a lot of people don't like that term because they say, hey, I can sin, and then on Sunday I can come pray, and I'm good. I can go sin, and then I can pray. That's not what we're talking about here. What we're talking about is, um, is you're working together. Um, what is not just right, but righteous, right? Um, when you find out you fall, when you find out you sin, like TC, I don't know if you caught that last prayer, right? We're talking about healing, but then he talked about some families that were, were out there, right? We have some families that are out there that, that aren't doing the right thing. Well, let's lift them up a prayer too, right? He prayed for them. He said, call out those family members that, that you want, right? And we started praying for them. That's the yoke right there. That's the yoke you need to have. Come on. And then when we walk... When we walk, um, this, is, this is the hard part. This is the hard part. And I, I wanted to use this story. I was, I was going to use a story that, that, that happened in my life, in my family's life, but um, um, I was battling with using it. But this came about, and it's sort of, the, sort of the same thing, sort of the same principle, right? And then this young lady here um, was... Um, I don't know if, we, if anybody's ever heard of the Bus Boys and Port, Poets. I guess it's a restaurant in um, Washington, D.C. And this young African-American lady was going to wait or wait or serve a young man with a red hat. Anybody know what the red hat symbols represents? Right, our 45th president, changing the, changing the world and all that good stuff. And, and she... Um, I, I put a couple of clips off from the from the article, but basically, she was like, "Oh my God!" And this was just after, I guess, right after his inaugural inauguration, and then they had the women had a a march, and it was right after that march that this young man came in to eat, and um, she didn't know what she was gonna do, but she just served him, right? She she had she didn't believe in that, she didn't believe in that situation, but she just served, and this young man was was moved by her, um, her, her, her servant and her smile and how she took care of him. He left her a $450 tip. Here's what it said. His name was Jason. Jason said that the $450 tip was a nod, not to the inauguration for the 45th president of the United States, Trump, our symbolic gesture that he hoped everyone could move forward together. The, the tip was much more than money. It was a way forward for people of all walks of life political beliefs to finally begin respecting and caring for one another. Of course, there was a lot of work to be done to reach the stage. The next slide. Jason hadn't even told his friends what he was doing. This was not some grand scheme that he had in his mind his pals had come up with. Rather, it was a spontaneous gesture that Jason had thought up after meeting the warm waitress. But he felt so moved by everything that he had seen in Washington over the weekend with both the election of the president and the powerful women's march, two walks of life with one goal. So walking it out, right? And then he um, gave her a little message. I don't know if we can read uh, on, the, on the, he gives her a little um, warm thank you on the receipt and says, God bless you with a $450 tip. Um, when we walk into somebody, um, when we, when our walk should be not that to, to get what we want, but to, to serve others, even when we're being served, right? Jesus said, I come not to serve, not, not, not to, to be served, right? Not, not to be served, but to serve. Sorry about that. Got a little, do, 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 do. Not to serve, but to be served, right? Um, 
we, we, we got to watch that, right? Um, we went to a, a, a class the other day, and it was about um, anger management. And one of the presenters said he walked into a, a, a place that the, the, the lady that was giving him service was having a bad day. And he said, you know what? I, I want to apologize for your bad day. Um, but I want to be the best customer you have today. And I hope that I'm your, I'm your best customer. And he started encouraging her and lifting her up and how it changed her attitude, right? We could, we could be a change agent by walking out in Christ and say, you know what? I want to be the best for you. Can I be the best for you? Come on. That's powerful. Next slide. Matthew eleven twenty eight and 30, the last one says, For my yoke is easy to bear, and the burdens I give you is light. The world would say, yeah, right. It's not easy. It's not easy. It's not easy when you, when you got to give up everything, right? The young rich, rich ruler, go sell all you got and come serve me. Woo, I can't do that, buddy. I'm sorry. Um, we're not going to do that, right? But the yoke is easy and light. When I thought about that walk, I read a portion of scripture about the, the pruning, right? When, when we get pruned, um, in, in old terms of pruning, it was to lift up, right? When, they, when, when a, a farmer prunes a, 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 a tree that produces fruit, it's usually a picture of, of, a, of a stick under a, a, a branch, and it's, he wants it to go back up. He doesn't want the, 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 the branch to hit the ground because the fruit would go bad. And they term that pruning, right? We think of it as cutting it off. It is cutting it off too, but that's a, it has a double meaning to that, right? It's to lift up. So I think what Jesus does when we say, you know what, God? I'm just going to serve you and follow you. He comes and lifts us up. He walks with us. He prunes us. He's like, you're not alone in this. But we did today, right? We lifted up some people, didn't we? We lifted up some names. We pruned them. We prayed that God would lift them up. Come on. And then Psalms 131, the next slide. This is something I did for my my kiddos. This was back in Christmas. I I wrote them a card, gave them a little Christmas gift, and then I um, inserted this psalm. The psalm goes like this, real short. It said, Lord, my heart is not proud. My eyes are not haughty. I do not concern myself with matters too great, too awesome for me to grasp. Instead, I have calm and quieted myself like a weaned child. No longer cries for its mother like milk. No, No longer cries for its mother's milk. Yes, like a weaned child, my soul is within me. O Israel, put your hope in the Lord now and always. Wow, could we say O O M F H? Put your hope in the Lord now and always. Come on, and then we're almost done here. There's three points that I I gave to my kiddos, and I want to give to you from this scripture. It says the psalmist begins with an emphatic reference to Yahweh. The psalmist experienced how wonderful complete submission to God is. Remember to submit to God. Come on. When, that's, we got we to gotta remember that. One of our kiddos, well, she's like adopted into our family. Um, we go and eat at um, Dairy Queen, and um, we're talking, we're talking about the scripture that day, and um, one thing she said that really stuck out and it started to get me going, and, and um, she said, you know what? It was about something going on in her ministry, and she said, you know what, I don't... I'm not going to concern myself with that. I'm just going to submit and see where the Lord's going in that ministry. She didn't agree with what was going on or what was being done. And I was like, wow, that's awesome. Bless you. Um, Just to submit, right? And then we started going, and then it got quiet. And I remember um, our our kiddos, we used to do that all the time in the, in, for, for dinners, talk about the scripture. And, and then my wife said, you should have read the room. It got a little quiet. Nobody was talking. And I said, you know, we just got to submit. God put something on my heart, and I started going with it from that, from that sentence that the young lady said. So we got we to gotta remember to submit. Third, uh, second point, there are godly aspirations and there are selfish ambitions. 
One way to distinguish between is to look for the focus on God or focus on yourself. Remember to check your focus. Who's it on? A strategy, right? Who's your focus on? I, I saw this picture and I said, my ambition in life is to be on the devil's most wanted list. <laughs> Come on. If, if, if there was to be a judge and jury judging us on our Christianity, how, much, how many of us would be found guilty? How many of us wouldn't? How many would say, oh, you're all right, you're good. You're guilty. Come here. Come on. Check that. Check where your ambition is. Is it all, you know what, I'm just going to give it up to God. And then the next day, the last point, right? A child not weaned embraces his mother with the thought of food and immediate satisfaction. A weaned child embraces his mother out of a desire for love, closeness, and compassion, or companionship, excuse me. Such, a, such as David, his humble desire to draw near to God. What is your posture and mindset? Amen. Remember to love God, not merely when he comforts you, but when he tries you. Amen. Woo, come on. And then I, I saw that picture, right? Humbly trust God. So it's a child. I said, man, I can see where, you know, people could probably get confused, but he, Jesus said, let the children come to me because to, to come to me is like a child, right? Let them come. Then you're like, well, wait, we don't want to be a wean child, but you, you don't, I'm, I'm confused. I'm confused, God. What do you want? And, and it's not whether you're a child or you're, where you're at in your, in your walk with Christ. It's where you're at in your submission to Christ. It's where you're at in your, in your wants and needs, right? It's your posture. Um, Jesse and, 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 and Pastor, when they're preaching that towards the end of the year, I'll talk about a posture, how you're standing. Um, it's important um, as a coach, um, being a, a, a D lineman coach, it, it, your posture is important. If you stand up, the battle's lost. They got you. You're blocked. You got to stay low, right? And it's important to stay low, um, to shoot out. Um, but most importantly, as a, as a, a defensive player, or offensive player, is you got to have a strategy and you got to have a plan. And you as a player got to study your opponent and know which way your opponent goes to the left, to the right, if he stands, if he grabs your pads. Um, but if you don't do that, you're going in there winging it, thinking, I have all the power. I know what I can do. I can beat anybody who comes against me. It, it's not a good strategy in life, right? Um, you got to study, got to study. And I wouldn't want to study what the devil's doing. I would study what God's doing and understand how he's going and where he's going, right? And the only way to get that is through the word. Can't get it any other place else. So what, I, what I'm doing in my, my life right now, when I read the scripture, I said, what, what do I got to catch? What do I got to see, Lord? Tell me what I got to see. And then what, what war is going on? Because in most scripture, there's a war going on. There's some type of battle um, going on there that you got to see. And then last, how can I use that to walk out in my life? I think if you use that strategy... You'll see your strength grow in, 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 in Christ. You get closer to him. You know what he's like. Um, pastor said something one time at a men's, men's meeting. He said, some people tell me I have favorites. Um, but I don't have favorites. I have people that just want to be with me. So you, every time you see me, you see them because they want to be with me. They just want to be where I'm at. Um, and, and could we do that with Christ? Could we just want to be wherever he's at? We're, 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 we're having a minute. Oh, man, we're having another meeting there. I got to go. Man, the Spurs are playing at 7, 5 o'clock. So I could be there. And then the meeting's at 6.55. We got to go. Um, you know, you got to just want to be where God's at and see, where, see what happens in your life. And then my reflection is to focus on God, right, um, by reading the Scripture each day. Try reading the Scripture each day. Well, of course... I'm going through Galatians, so I was going to tell you, hey, go through Galatians. I, I started through the first part of Galatians. I, I thought Galatians was the grace chapter, but there's a lot of, there's a lot of tough stuff in Galatians. That's good. Woo, this is grace. Um, but go through Galatians and see what you got. And then I want to close with this. 
As I'm reading, um, the praise team, come on up. Come on up, praise team. We're going to close out. Woo! 11, 11.45. Come on, I told you. I thought you are going to be in tacos in 15 minutes. Um, I'm going to close out with this prayer from Nehemiah. A dangerous prayer. Check it out. Here's what Nehemiah prayed. O oh Lord, God of heaven, the great and awesome God who keeps his covenant of unveiling love with those who love him and obey his commandments. Let me read that again. O oh Lord, God of heaven, the great and awesome God who keeps his covenant of unveiling love with those who love him and obey his commandments. Listen to my prayer. Look down and see me pray night and day for your people of Israel. I confess that I have sinned against you. Yes, even my own family and I have sinned. We have sinned terribly by, obeying the, by not obeying the commandments, decrees, and regulations that you gave us through your servant Moses. Please remember what you told your servant Moses. If you are unfaithful to me, I will scatter you among the nations. But if you return to me, and obey my commandments. I live by them. And even if you are exiled to the end of the earth, I will bring you back to the place I have chosen for my name to be honored. The people, who res- the people you rescued by your great power and strong hand are your servants. Oh Lord, please hear my prayer. Listen to the prayer of those who delight in honoring you. Please grant me success today by making the king favorable to me. Put into his heart to be kind to me. Whew, if we could take that prayer and change it around, right? If you have a bad boss, try praying for your boss and use this prayer, right? Grant me success today in making my boss favorable to me. Put in his or her heart to be kind to me. You having a problem at school? convert this this prayer into your make it personalized to you I heard one one of the preachers I listened to on the radio I forget who it was but it was in a, a, a profound statement he said it's hard to talk about somebody you're praying for Whew. I never I mean that's a good question right when you say man that guy's crazy are you praying for him it's hard to, to talk down to him if you're praying for him right if we can stand to our feet, we can stand to our feet. Um, I asked, I asked, she's not here. This, um, this song has a big place in my heart. My granddaughter, she's just turned two, loves the song. And, um, it reminds me, a year before she was born, I said it one time when I was preaching, my wife picked out a onesie, and she, I said, who, who's having, who, has, who had a baby? We're buying a, we're buying Christmas gifts. Who's buying? And she goes, she said, this is for my granddaughter, or my grandbaby, that my daughter's going to have. And I was like, oh, man. And we, there was a situation, right? I said, I don't know if that's possible. But who am I? Who am I? So what I want to encourage you, if you, have a, if you have a need, I know we prayed earlier, but if you have something you're struggling with, if you need God, if you need to talk to yourself and say, God, I... Who am I to believe with all the faith in this room? Right, because we prayed and we saw some people come up. There's some people that have have faith in this room. And I want to encourage you because they're going to be praying for you. Come up if you have something in your, in your life while the song's playing for you.